Hello everyone, welcome to the course scanning electron ion probe microscopy in material characterization. In last two lectures, I have given a brief introduction about the microscopy. Today, we will straight forward go to a major microscopic technique that is scanning electron microscope. So, in the introduction, we talked about uh, the history of the microscope, magnification, resolution, some of the lens aberration and also why a smaller wavelength of the electron is good for higher resolution. Today, we will see what is the SEM and what are its capabilities. Uh, this SEM is an equipment that scan the sample surface or specimen surface with a very finely converged electron beam under vacuum and detects the information or signal produced at that time from the sample and presents an enlarged image of the sample surface on the monitor screen. As you see, the electron beam is incidenting on the sample surface and once it incident on the sample surface, it interacts with the atom present in the on the specimen in the specimen and several signals come out whether we want it or not want it. Uh, the major type of signals that comes out from the samples are like secondary electrons, here you see secondary electrons. We say it is secondary electrons because the electrons which are incidenting on the sample are the primary electrons. So, these are primary electrons, primary electrons and then we have secondary electrons and primary electrons have energy normally from 100 uh, volt to around 30 kilo volt and the secondary electrons have much less energy is normally less than 50 EV, energy is less than 50 EV and these secondary electrons are primarily used for the scanning electron microscopy providing us the three dimensional morphology of the specimen. In addition to the secondary electrons also we have back scattered electrons which also come out from the sample and uh, the energy of the back scattered electrons are greater than 50 electron volt. So, energy of the secondary electrons is less than 50 electron volt and the energy of the back scattered electrons is greater than 50 electron volts. We say it is back scattered because those electrons scatter towards the primary beam or back scatter towards the primary beam that is why the back scattered it is called back scattered electrons. In addition to the secondary electrons and back scattered electrons, we also get X rays, those can be characteristic X rays or that may be continuous X rays. And the characteristic X rays are utilized for elemental composition analysis. We would able to know what are the elements present in our sample and how much percentage of those elements present in the sample. Uh, in addition to these three, we light can be generated. Uh, once the electron beam incident on the sample, electron hole pairs may be created and when those electron hole pairs are recombined, then light may be produced if the sample is semiconducting in nature. And some of the electrons can be absorbed inside the sample also, no doubt. Uh, we can also have a uh, o, o, other electrons uh, comes out of the from sample from the surface of this uh, specimen. Uh, in the scanning electron microscope, we do not use uh, the other electrons etcetera. We primarily use backscattered electrons, secondary electrons and characteristic X-rays to know the sample morphology, to examine the sample morphology and also elemental composition. If the sample is thin enough, then electron beam can pass through the sample, then direct beam can come. There can be inelastically in scattered electrons, there can be elastically scattered electrons. Uh, this kind of things can happen, mostly we study in the transmission electron microscope study that we will not discuss in this case. So, now we go to next, well this is an 
SEM that you see a photograph of SEM uh, and in this uh, SEM we have uh, at the top we have uh, uh, electron gone will be here we will have electron gons here there is a column and here we have a specimen chamber and below which we have many vacuum pumps. And the, as I say that in scanning electron microscope electro beam scans across the surface. So, uh, it will scan on the surface from the left to right going from one spot then another spot like that keep on going and then again coming back here then scanning here. And when it scans when electron beam falls on one spot information is collected and passed to the detector and detector will detect the signals coming out of the sample and pass to the processor which will amplify the signal and pass it to the display screen. In this way uh, the electron beam will scan across the surface of the specimen and the information will be sent for image processing or obtaining the image. So, the linear magnification is nothing but the length on the display screen divided by the length on the specimen that is what our magnification. So, if the electron beam size is much smaller then we can have much larger magnification. So, uh, that is what we will see. So, as the electron beam scans and the uh, signals are generated primarily the secondary electrons. The secondary electrons can be generated in different quantities from different points of the specimen. Some points may be less number of secondary electrons will be generated and in some place uh, more number of secondary electrons will be generated. So, if one place more number of secondary electrons are generated those will be appearing as a bright on the screen because more number of electrons are generated from those place and the places where less number of secondary electrons will be generated those will be appearing as a darker. So, therefore, there is a brightness difference on the screen and there is that brightness difference on the screen will tell uh, will creates a three dimensional black and white uh, images. So, this is what happen in a scanning electron microscope. So, electron beam will scan across the surface secondary electron generated from each point of this specimen will be collected by the detector and passed into the image processing uh, system and we will see the image on the screen. Let us say if the minimum size of this spot on the CRT let us say cathode tube on the screen is 0.1 mm then a 100 like 100 mm CRT will have a 1000 into 1000 pixel. Uh, pixel is the smallest unit of on the CRT screen and similarly uh, there will be a specimen pixel that is the smallest size on the specimen at which our electron beam is incidenting on it. So, specimen pixel is nothing but the spot size on the CRT divided by magnification or magnification is equal to the image size divided by the size of the sample. So, in this cases then specimen pixel is equal to spots of the CRT divided by magnification which is let us say 0.1 mm by m is for magnification. So, now uh, then how how small the uh, pixel pixel can be as small as possible uh, that is not a problem, but uh, having a small uh, small pixel is not enough smallest pixel is not enough. Uh, we should have also the electron beam as small as pixel. If the electron beam size is same as that of pixel size then the uh, the information that will be collected on the CRT screen will properly match. For example, if the pixel size is bigger, but electron beam size is smaller, then signal will be much less and with that less signal, we will not have enough brightness on the screen to visualize the image. Similarly, if, uh, if the pixel size is small, but, but electron beam size will be is more, then what will happen? One electron beam will be overlapping few pixel and therefore, the resolution will be degraded. So, resolution of the SEM can no better than the pixel size. Sim more uh, accurately, the, uh, the 
a pixel size and electron beam spot size should be equal and then only we can get the best resolution. Moreover, uh, in the SCM, in the modern SCM, the electron beam size, size can be as small as 1 nanometer and therefore, we can have a resolution in the range of nanometer or less than that. So, here is an SCM which you see scanning electron microscopic image which you will see uh, with a resolution spatial resolution better, better than 1 nanometer. So, resolution uh, means the uh, features uh, the, the minimum distance uh, between two s, uh, features that we can see as a separate entities. So, now as you see in this image there are many um, bright spot bright dots and the distance between two uh, those bright dots is as small as 1 nanometer or in this particular case is 0 0.9 nanometer and this image is collected at 9 kilo electron volt with a magnification of 300,000 and all modern scanning electron microscope routinely get this type of resolution, uh, re, uh, routinely get um, provides this type of resolution um, for our specimen. Here you see a SCM image of uh, polymer membrane uh, and this uh, is a uh, cell guard which is a polymer membrane extensively used for uh, battery application. Uh, thus, uh, as polymers are non-conducting sample, so therefore the sample was coated with a, a thin layer of platinum, and uh, that is, uh, and this uh, image provides us how uh, pores, what is the shape of the pores, what is the size of the pores, and how uniformly these pores are uh, present in the polypropylene, uh, this cell guard membrane. So not only the high magnification image that you have seen here in previous two cases, but also we can get uh, low magnification image from the scanning electron microscope. And here you see a, a low magnification image uh, showing a much larger area of a specimen. Uh, this is a uh, SEM image of, a, of the face of a helmeted demon like warrior from the rear of, rear of the handle of 18th century Japanese sword. And this region is the helmet, this region of the helmet is the gilt. And what uh, is uh, important here is that a low magnification image can provide uh, information that are uh, that will complement to uh, characterization done by other techniques such, such as optical microscope, um, especially for like forensic studies and some other application uh, this type of low magnification image also very useful. So, here is another th uh, important things uh, of a scanning electron microscope. Uh, so scanning electron microscope uh, uh, image as you see in the left side there is optical image and in the right side there is a scanning electron mi uh, microscopy image. Uh, in the right side image you could clearly see uh, how the stereos stereoscopic, uh, stereoscopic features is presented with a much clean obvious three dimensional uh, features. Uh, moreover, uh, you could certainly see the background, uh, background and also uh, the three dimensional features in the right side of the scanning electron microscopic image as compared to the optical microscope image. This is due to because this is due to that uh, the scanning electron microscopy provides larger depth of field. So, larger depth of field it provides and that larger depth of field is, is a unique feature of scanning electron microscope. We will discuss what is that larger depth of field. So, here you see uh, a uh, this is this is these are the um, uh, carbon fibers. These are the carbon fibers which are uh, used for uh, uh, used in parasol for blocking the UV rays. And these carbon fibers are uh, coated with a plat uh, titanium oxide particles. That are titanium oxide particles are mixed with this uh, uh, carbon fibers. And optical mi in the optical microscope image, as you see in the top right corner. Uh, it is not very well focused in the top optical uh, microscope image, but in the bottom uh, the scanning electron microscope image you can clearly see uh, the uniform focus across the sample. Uh, this is because of the higher depth of field or larger depth of field uh, of for 
of such uh, scanning electron microscope. In addition to that uh, as we can take much uh, higher magnification image because SCM provides higher resolution, we could see small white dots uh, in the magnified images and those white dots are uh, the uh, inorganic titanium oxide particle that are used to block the UV rays. So, now uh, we discussed let us say what is the uh, depth of field. what is the depth of field. As we discussed scanning electron microscope have much larger depth of field. So, it, it is the range of um, it is the range of the position for the object it is the for the object for which our eye can detect uh, no change in the sharpness, no change in the sharpness. of the image. It is the range of position for the object for which our eye can detect no change in the sharpness of the image. This is what the depth of field. So, for example, uh, electron beam is coming from aperture coming like this. So, this is our point of optimum focus. plane of optimum focus, focus plane of optimum focus at this position it will be correctly focused. Now, if we go, we go above this or below this plane, if we go above this plane or below this um, plane then the beam will be get defocused let us say. this is we are going away uh, above and below. But now, if the image is within the focus image within this range, range of let us say h, if image is focus within this range, this is our depth of field, this is our depth of field. So, let us say beam size is here r 0 and when it go above or below the radius of the beam will increase or it will defocus to a value of r and if the image is in focus within this range then that range is called depth of field. For example, uh, in front of me there are 100 rods students are sitting and if I have a camera here and if I could uh, have a photographs where the students let us say from first row to the tenth row are well focused. So, that the distance from first row to tenth row is my depth of field and after that they may not be well focused. So, the range of the position object the range of the position of the object for which we have a focused image then we say that is a depth of field. So, for example, in this case uh, I can uh, write here this is this is the main optics axis, this is the main optic axis and this angle is our alpha. So, I can write 10 alpha is equal to r divided by h by 2 or as alpha here angle of aperture is very small alpha can be written as 2 r by h. So, now edge is the distant that edge is the distant or depth of field over which the specimen will remain in focus. But if the defocus is smaller than or equal to the pixel size, if the defocus is smaller than or equal to pixel size, if the pixel size is bigger then then certainly this uh, 
beam size, little wider beam size will also gives us the focused image. If the pixel size is bigger than the beam size or if the pixels, pixel size is or our defocus is smaller than the pixel size, we can write r is equal to p, p is pixel, pixel r is here defocus. So, as we know uh, p is p is equal to previously we seen in this case 0 0.1 mm divided by m. So, we can write from this we can write h is equal to by putting the r value there because this is r, r is equal to p, we can write r is equal, uh, this will be 0 0.2 mm by m alpha. So, here h is the depth of field and m is the magnification, magnification and alpha is the angle of uh, divergence or aperture angle. As you see that by having a larger magnification, our depth of field will be reduced. Similarly, by having a larger angle of aperture, depth of field will be reduced. So, in order to have more depth of field, we should have low magnification along with small angle of aperture. So, this is what importance for opti this is for electron microscope. For optical microscope, for optical microscope, uh, this edge, which is depth of field, is equal to six one lambda divided by mu sin alpha ten alpha, which is nothing but zero point six one lambda divided by alpha square, alpha square. This is for opt uh, for the uh, optical microscope. Normally, for optical microscope, we have very small depth of field. On the other hand, for electron microscope, we have quite uh, high or large depth of field. So, so this is one of the advantage of the scanning electron microscope, or it is the uniqueness of scanning electron microscope to have a larger depth of field. Then, composition analysis, as I have discussed. Uh, the same fibers that used for parasol. Uh, here is the cross sectional image in the SA, and uh, X ray is generated when electron beam uh, incident on the sample. Those uh, by measuring the energy of those X ray, we could tell uh, which element is present in, on, in the specimen. So particularly, if all the elements, all the atoms in the predictable have different electronic configuration. So, when electron beam strikes on the specimen, and the specimen has atoms, atom has different electron configuration. Some of the electrons will be dislodged from its cell and when an electron is dislodged from the core cell and outer electrons will jump back to the inner cell of the electrons and in this process it will produce X-rays. By measuring the, so as uh, all the atoms have different electronic configuration, so the energy of the X-rays coming from different atom will be different as the energy of the X-rays from different atom is different, we could know which element or which atom is present in our sample and how much percentage from the intensity, how much percentage of those element present in the sample. So, and from those this is a EDX spectrum, it, it, it is a EDX spectrum and uh, it gives uh, in the x axis we have energy, energy of the x-rays and y axis we have intensity, from there we will tell which element uh, or which atom presents on the sample. And from those energy we can also create a, uh, a image and that is what the called mapping, we can create and show that which region has what elements present. So, elemental distribution can be known from the mapped image. As you see in the right side, there was uh, titanium carbon because it is a carbon fiber and titanium was incorporated into it, titanium oxide was incorporated into, in, into it. So, how titaniums are distributed, uh, how titaniums are distributed uh, in our uh, sample. In addition to that, we can also do structural analysis by using SEM if we have 
electron backscatter detector. If you remember I told the backscatter electrons are also generated from this specimen and those backscatter electrons uh, can give us uh, the backscatter diffraction pattern. So, as you see in the left side there is a diffraction pattern uh, this image uh, this diffraction pattern is th th there are several lines as you see there are several bands you see and there is each bands cross each other with a particular angle and by measuring the angle and measuring the distance between those lines we could able to tell uh, about the the material is crystalline or not the grain orientation local texture and phase identification of the bulk materials particularly this is useful when the material is in bigger size it is not suitable when material is in nanometer scale or smaller size it is uh, it is only uh, because the diffraction signal are very poor in the small uh, sample a small region of the sample. So, individual nanomaterial cannot be utilized for uh, this type of analysis, but if you have a bulk sample metallurgical sample geological sample then you can study uh, the grains orientation and texture of the material in the uh, using the uh, electron beam uh, electron backscatter diffraction pattern if you have a EBSD detector attached to the scanning electron microscope. So, what uh, today I have discussed the SCM modern SCM have a capability to produce uh, the image with a resolution better than 1 nanometer higher than 1 nanometer that means uh, you can see the features uh, as small as 1 nanometer or two features spa uh, the spacing between the two features less than 1 nanometer. So, and another important uh, aspects of the scanning electron microscope that it has a very high and large depth of field. So, it is not necessary that sample has to be flat to get the information from the whole area uh, as compared to the light microscope it has much larger depth of field normally it is around in the range of 50 micrometer as compared to around 1 micrometer for light microscope. And if you have a EDS detector that can detect the energy of X-rays then we can know what are the elements present in the sample and how much quantity of those elements uh, present in the sample. So, elemental composition of the specimen can be measured with the uh, SEM. So, normally most of the SEM like more than 95 percent of the scanning electron microscope have uh, this feature like you uh, they have all secondary electrons detector that would provide such three dimensional image that are also backscatter detectors and also uh, EDS detector but uh, very few SEM where people are interested for texture measurements or uh, grain orientation they keep it as a EBSD detector with the EBSD detector they can also find structural information of this specimen. So, these are the references for more information or more detailed uh, study. Thank you.